The 2024 NFL Draft is only a day away, and the QB Draft class is looking pretty solid this year. This year's QB Draft class includes the likes of Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Michael Penix Jr., JJ McCarthy, and Bo Nix, just to name a few. It is projected that three quarterbacks are going to be taken in the first round of this year's draft, or it might even be four depending on what happens after picks one through five. This loaded QB draft class kind of reminds me of the 2021 QB draft class. Out of the five quarterbacks taken in the first round, only one of them is still with their original team. So let's take a look back at the 2021 NFL draft and use it as a cautionary tale when it comes to drafting QBs. First pick in the 2021 NFL draft. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence. Coming into this draft, Trevor Lawrence was the consensus number one overall pick and was also dubbed a generational talent. And there was a good reason for it. Trevor Lawrence was making waves back in high school at Cartersville High School. From his sophomore year to his senior year, Trevor Lawrence led Cartersville to 41 straight victories, two state championships, and four regional titles, while also receiving numerous National High School Player of the Year honors. He also broke the Georgia State record for passing yards and passing touchdowns, which was previously held by Deshaun Watson. He was a five-star recruit and had many offers from elite programs. But in the end, he committed to Clemson. In his three seasons at Clemson, he lived up to the hype. In three seasons, he had a combined record of 34-2 while passing for 10,098 yards, 90 touchdowns, and a national championship. Trevor Lawrence's rookie season was a rough one. Trevor Lawrence was, had the misfortune of having Urban Meyer as a head coach. Not only was Urban Meyer a bad fit for the Jaguars, but he also was a major distraction on and off the field. Long story short, Trevor Lawrence's rookie year was a disaster, but in his sophomore NFL season, he was starting to flash his talent, which made him a number one overall pick. Thanks to new coach Doug Peterson, he helped the Jaguars make the playoffs and beat the Chargers in the wildcard round. Although last season was a struggle for Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars, he is by far the best quarterback in this draft, but that is something that can't be said for the second overall pick. The New York Jets select Zach Wilson. Quarterback, BYU. It's safe to say that the Jets did not find their QB of the future. Now, I've already made two videos on Zach Wilson's Jets career, so I'm just going to give a quick rundown. <clears throat> He broke out his junior year during the COVID-19 year, playing weak competition. He had an amazing pro day in which he fooled everyone, including myself, that he could be a star quarterback. His first two seasons were highlighted by injuries and poor play, which frustrated everybody. After his second season, it was painfully clear that Zach Wilson was not ready, so the Jets traded for Aaron Rodgers. This was a win-win for the Jets and Zach Wilson. The Jets had a quarterback that could help them win now, and Zach Wilson got to sit and learn from Aaron Rodgers. So this looked like a great situation, but sadly, four plays into Aaron Rodgers first game as a Jet he tore his Achilles and then that's when all hell broke loose. Since their plans were pretty much ruined Zach Wilson was thrown back in to be the starter. Zach Wilson went 5-7 and seven and was inactive for most games in the second half of the year and it also didn't help that the Jets were a complete mess behind the scenes but to be honest one of their Jets never a mess. The athletic article goes into detail on the Jets 2023 season and it highlighted how Robert Sala lost his confidence in Zach Wilson. In public Robert Sala would avoid criticizing Zach Wilson, but behind closed doors in private, this man Robert Sala pinned all of the offensive struggles on Wilson. It's safe to say that Zach Wilson won't be back after the 2023 season. In the offseason, Zach Wilson and a 2024 7th round pick was traded to the Broncos for a 2024 6th round pick. The one thing that I will always remember about the Zach Wilson era is that his ex-girlfriend accused him of banging her mom. So you know what? That makes him a legend in my book. In the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. Compared to the other quarterbacks in the draft, Trey Lance is probably the biggest flop out of all of them, but also one of the biggest mysteries. Trey Lance played at FCS powerhouse North Dakota State, and he only started 17 games for the Bison, but he was an intriguing prospect thanks to his 2019 season, in which he led the Bisons to a 16-0 record and threw 28 touchdowns and 0 picks. And the 49ers really love Trey Lance. They love Trey Lance so much that they traded a buttload of picks to move up to the number 3 spot to drive Trey Lance. Those picks were turned into Jalen Waddle, Bradley Chubb, and Tyreek Hill. But hey, those picks won't matter if Trey Lance turned into a franchise quarterback. Sadly, that didn't happen. In the 2022 season, Trey Lance was named the starter, and in his first game he struggled in the rain against the Bears, and in the next game, 
Trey Lance suffered a season-ending ankle injury against the Seahawks. This injury brought back Jimmy Garoppolo into the starter QB position, but then Garoppolo would soon be injured as well, which opened the door for mystery-relevant Brock Purdy, and that would pretty much be the end of Trey Lance's 49ers career, as during the offseason, Trey Lance was moved to the Cowboys. It's hard to gauge Trey Lance since he only played two games, but thanks to the amount of picks he was traded up for, Trey Lance is the biggest flop by default. With the 11th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the My Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. Justin Fields was doomed from the start. In his first start against the Browns, Justin Fields completed just 6 of his 20 passes and was getting mauled by the Browns defense. Justin Fields showed his potentials in years 1 and 2, and his third season was supposed to be his, his coming out party. Well, long story short, Last season was not his coming out party. Justin Fields didn't take the step that the Bears front office and fans thought he would have. In this upcoming draft, thanks to the Panthers, the Bears have the first overall pick, again. And it's all but a given that the Bears will be drafting Caleb Williams. So Justin Fields was traded to the Steelers. Hopefully, a new change of scenery will help Justin Fields. So let's hope he puts it all together somewhere else. And that leads us to the final quarterback taken in the first round, Mac McCorkle Jones. At the time, it looked like the Patriots found their next quarterback after the Tom Brady era, and it was all lined up perfectly for Mac Jones. Going from one dynasty head coach to another dynasty head coach, it was a match made in heaven. Mac Jones' rookie year was a successful one, as the Patriots went 10-7 and, and made the playoffs. Mac Jones was an alternate pro bowler that year and finished second in offensive rookie of the year voting. Things were looking up for McCorkle. Sadly, this would be the peak of the Mac Jones era in New England. In his second season, Jones' development went downhill as offensive coordinator Josh McDaniels left to become the new head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. Bill Belichick made the mind-numbing decision to make Joe Judge and Matt Patricia run the offense. Two coaches who have no substantial history of coaching offense at all which led to the Patriots offense struggling and Mac Jones' development going down the toilet. This decision made by Bill Pelichek is probably one of his most baffling decisions he's ever made in his legendary career. An ankle injury then opened the door for rookie Bailey Zappi, and the team played marginally better when he was under center. During a Monday night football game against the Chicago Bears, Jones was benched for Zappi, further sending him into a spiral. Last season, the Patriots hired Bill O'Brien to run the offense as his offensive coordinator but it seemed like Jones was already broken by the pairing of Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. Mac Jones was benched multiple times throughout the year in place of Zappi, before being sent to the bench for the remainder of the season after week 12. In the offseason, Mac Jones was traded to the Jacksonville Jaguars for a 6th round pick. So let the 2021 draft class be a cautionary tale when it comes to a loaded QB draft class. But hey, at least it's a lot better than the 2022 draft class, I'll say that much. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and subscribe down below. I am OneDubs. Thanks for stopping by.